All right, so uh, shall we call the meeting to order? Let's do it. All right, and um, it would appear that we've got, uh, you're gonna do the roll call or have you already done it? We have not, let's go ahead. Jake? Oh, here. Salmonson? Here. Pilata? Here. And Osterholm, are you on? Anywhere, read. Joined like seconds ago. Oh, fantastic. Osterholm. He's still connecting. But he's there. Okay. There he goes. Uh, Scott, we're just calling into session. <laughs> so, <Start there. laughs> so you're in and Zoff. I'm here. All right, one, two. Hey, Richard, three, how are you? Five. Hi, Alex. Also present is Planning and Zoning Administrator Denise Swinger and Village Solicitor Brianne Parcels. And we're off the race. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, everybody take a look at the agenda. Are there any uh, changes or additions to the agenda? I'm not hearing any. Okay, that's good. And then uh, there's a communication. Uh, and I'm not sure what we're supposed to do. Do we just acknowledge that or what? Uh, Ellis, it has some bearing on your first hearing. And so you may yeah. just, you know, as you're pre, before you do the Duncan standards, you might want to just discuss that letter briefly. We will do that. Thank that you. makes sense. All right, then we've got some minutes from a prior meeting. Uh, and it's the meeting from September 23rd. Are there any uh, changes, additions, or subtractions to the minutes? Yes. Um, what you got, Richard? At the top of what's labeled page two of my packet, um, there in the second line, it reads, is located outside the setback and will be inside the setback. Those should be swapped. It should be inside the setback area, and these will be outside the setback area. If, if that correction is made, then um, I'm happy with the minutes. Okay, well, that seems like I, a substantive not, correction. <laughs> I'm not finding it. All right, let me see. The page two of the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's page two of the, of the packet. Page um, two of the packet. Okay, the, the agenda in the packet. Let me see. That I'm you're too, oh, no, I'm sorry, minutes. you're too late for that. <laughs> because the accept or excerpted minutes for July 8th and you've already approved them. No, I'm talking about September 23rd. Third. So so it's it's the second page of those minutes, Judy. Oh, oh wait a minute. Gotcha. Um, let me just say that 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 her edition. Let me read that again. Her, um, she, uh, okay, yeah, pro that's probably. No, hold on. No, no her, uh, her, her, no, they're, they're accurate as written. They're yeah, accurate. Yeah, her, I think that the addition itself was inside or was outside of the setback area, but when she added those roof eaves on it is what caused the problem. No, it's, it's clarified. Setback right there because Salmonson received clarification that Hoover had erred in filling out the request and the overhang will not extend to the, is that what you're talking about? But into the setback, yeah. Yeah, the statement as it's written, the request for a variance as it's written is incorrect. Then Salmonson had it corrected. So you correctly stated the incorrect request. Is that what you're claiming? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Richard, what do you think? Using. Yeah. I, I find it rather confusing, but if that's if that if this is the the request that we're quoting here in the minutes, and that that request was in error. Um, okay, it's it's definitely the statement here is in error. Gotcha. Those those if you switch switch those two words, it would make sense. It doesn't make sense now. Okay, but when you look at that paragraph right below it, or two right. a little bit below it, 
it seems to provide enough clarification. Um, any it other? Did, it didn't. Clar it didn't clarify the statement. Okay. It talks about the property line. Yeah, yeah. Just tell me that. what you want corrected, dude. We will do it. What do you want corrected? Yeah. Okay. Please change where it says, although the garage addition's building footprint is located outside the setback area, change outside to inside. The roof mm -hmm. ease it, will it be won't, outside it won't the setback be. area. No, the roof, the roof is inside the setback, the prohibited setback. Yeah by 22 inches. The garage itself that's being built is fine. It's not a, It's not encroaching into the setback. I agree. It's just we the word gave in, the to inside. To accommodate the eaves, which were outside. No, they were no, the setback. They're going into All the right. setback. Yeah. All right, so we're talking about which direction inside and outside are. Yes. How about we do this? Although the garage addition's building footprint is located outside the setback area, the roof eaves will extend into to the prohibited setback area or into the otherwise prohibited setback area. That makes sense. Does that make more sense? Okay. Can I say this? Isn't the garage that was proposed, the foundation of that garage met setback standards? It was. Absolutely. Okay. The eaves did not. That's the problem. Say that. Forget about this inside outside because I don't know whether you're you're when you're inside a setback or outside a setback. If you're inside, you're wrong. If you're inside, you're wrong. It, it's just not intuitive to me. I'll say that. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Do we have the, the fresh language then? But I, I now understand what you're saying to me, so. Okay. Any other additions or changes? Yes. I yeah. voted no on the rotation of the chair. Whoop. Remember? Uh, rotating the chair, solicitor. The last, next. Four to one. Oh, yeah. That's okay. very garbled in the tape, so I'm glad you correct. Oh, yeah. sorry. You do no, understand that, you, that it was the tape. having voted no does not exempt you from having to be the chair. Can we okay. discuss later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other changes? All right, with those changes accomplished, uh, do we have a motion? I motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? All righty, let's slide into the, uh, the couple of the substantive uh, public hearings that we've got today. The first would be the continuation of the hearing that took place a while ago related to the property uh, on Omar Circle. Um, and um, Denise, do you wanna lead us through this? Sure, sure. And that, and that um, did happen back in July. Um, we want, uh, BZA wanted to give uh, Mr. Schultz, an opportunity to um, try to uh, mitigate the stormwater and also have a chance to actually have some rain to um, test it out. Um, and uh, we have just decided to then regroup uh, for tonight's meeting to see where he's at on that. Um, there, we did contact um, the neighbor who had, who had originally um, had a concern about it. Um, he had talked with Mr. Schultz. And he, he said basically in a, just in a nutshell, it's a work in progress. So it's not completely mitigated for him, but you know, he wants to work with Mr. Schultz and, and uh, he, he be believes Mr. Schultz wants to do the right thing and, and get it corrected. And he has done some work on it and he's here tonight. And, and I did provide some photos, <laughs> which he can explain to you if you would like what he has been able to do so far. And that's it for me. All right, any discussion or any questions for Denise before we hear from Mr. Schultz? All righty, well, um, I'm not hearing any questions for you, Denise. Okay. Uh, do Mr. Schultz, is there, are you here? Are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yeah, I can. How are you doing? Good. Good. Well, thank you for being here. Um, 
you want to just uh, kind of tell us what's going on? Well, the project is completed. Uh, we got, uh, as you can see, gutters and eaves troughs, and I got uh, the French drain system installed. So basically, everything that I submitted um, to you guys is completed. Um, we got the rock. We got that, uh, as you can see there. That, uh, I don't know if you can see that picture. That's that easy. Um, uh, what do they call it? Easy uh, with the store. It, what do you call it? Easy um, uh, drainage. It helps. It's better than just the rocks. So I want to, you know, a step above that to help mm -hmm. with any type of drainage thing. But had the gutters professionally installed and eaves troughs and all that. So um, I think I did everything that I could, honestly. You know, I don't know what else, what else there is to do. So that's. Is it having the desired effect? Say it again. Is it having? Is it working? Um, I feel like it is. I mean, I mean, I think the way his prop. I think the biggest thing is elevation, because my you know my property sits a little higher. So I think there will, there might always be a a, a problem like with heavy, heavy, heavy rain. Um, but I think with me doing what I did, it's going to help alleviate and mitigate the problem. Did you hear me? All right. Other questions for Mr. Schultz? Yes. How did you calculate the volume of the trench, the, the, the pipe and the gravel that you put in? How, how did you determine how long to make that? Well, it's actually uh, 15 feet from the bottom of the east, you know, the bottom of the eaves troughs away from his property. Both of them are. And, um, and um, you know, it's actually pointed more toward my house. I, I can see that from the pictures. What, what I know from having done this kind of work is that normally you calculate the area of the roof and you take what you consider to be a, a maximum storm event. So for example, we had a two inch storm recently and you calculate how much water you have to hold in your trench. Because if your trench completely fills up with water, it stops working. Right, and the, the, that volume of the trench, as you said, it, it, I believe from the drawing was a square foot minus the gravel uh, that went into the, the trench, <laughs> just the spaces in the gravel and the space in the pipe. And if there's enough pipe and enough gravel to hold all the water that falls on the roof, then it should work. And presumably it will soak into the ground before the next rain comes. But if it doesn't, then it'll just back up. Right. Well, I mean, I did, uh, you know, the 15 feet and it's about, uh, what is it? Two to three feet deep, you know, trying to work with the elevation of it to make it, you know, so I haven't seen any problems. Okay, I, I got the impression from the conversation with your neighbor that things were better, but not solved. Right, well, what I suggested to him was, because I even had someone come and, because I was going to add some more stuff, but he said, you did everything you could. He said, he, he said, but the problem with it, it with the problem with the property is his property sits lower and he, no matter what you do, he said, in a heavy, 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 heavy rain, he will always have some type of flooding. He said, there, you did everything you could do. So, you know, That being said, that's all you know I can say on that. And prior to anything being built, you know, I went to talk to him about it, and he even said to me that he had put a a uh, sub pump years ago because his property, you know, in the past has flooded. So, but I mean, it doesn't go to this his house or anything; it just goes around that big tree that 
that's what you because I went over there. See, this is a problem right here. What's the problem? Who's that speaking? Who's speaking? Hello, who's speaking? Sorry. Nope. Okay. Something else is a problem. Um, all right. Sorry. So uh, this is uh, back to Ellis here for a second. Um, I was, I, I don't think I was at the, the prior meeting. I don't see my name in, in the minutes of that meeting and I don't have a recollection of it. So I gather the backdoor neighbors are Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Felder, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm sorry, what is the relationship of Mary Gail Simpson then to, to your property? She's at 667 Omar. Is she your neighbor, next door neighbor? I have no idea who that is. What is it you said? Okay. 667 Omar Circle? I have no idea. 667 Omar Circle. I don't know. Okay. A raven, she uh, is next door to Felder's, isn't she? You looked that up. I'm checking on that again. I think so. She lives this is the person that, that wrote us the letter. I'm just trying to understand right, uh, right. You know, who she is and how she fits into all this. Yes, she lives on the other side. Um, she is to the east of Felder. There's kind of like a, a, a large lot or, or yard between the two of them. Uh, so on uh, Mr. Schultz's side, that would be three doors down. Gotcha. All right, um, other questions? So I think the only question I would have is if we've had significant rain, Ms. Schultz, what have you found? What have you found from uh, uh, significant rains that we've had? How are the gutters holding up? Are they overflowing? Are we pushing the water or is things seem to be pretty good? What have you found so far? It seems to be working good. I'm, I mean, you know, with retaining and mitigating the rain, um, you know, the gutters are great. I got the biggest gutters you can get. Right. And, um, you know, the French drains and all that, and the rock, and then, like I said, that special type of tubing. So. That's all I've got. Okay, Thank and uh, Denise, did uh, did the Felders have notice of today's uh, mm -hmm. event, that there would be a public hearing on this today? Yes. And, and so I assume did uh, uh, the woman that wrote us the letter, I'm not seeing yeah. her name right now. Yeah. She did too? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Uh, we send to a budding and adjacent property owners. And then, uh, of course, there is a sign out in his yard. So if she was several doors down, she may not have gotten a letter, but she would have seen the sign and, and then inquired about it. Gotcha. Okay, very good. Um, and then, Denise, you make some recommendations at the end of your report. Am I right? Yeah. And uh, it looks like even the, the uh, village solicitor got involved in this. Uh, I'll, I'll just read this. Uh, if the BZA approves the variance, staff requests that the owner complete the required zoning permit and pay the appropriate fees, sign the legal agreement along with the payment of the recorder's fee and finish completion of the remedial storm water, the remediation of storm water within a set period of time. Um, let's set aside the completion of the remediation of storm water for just a second. Yes. Um, are you willing to, um, to um, sign the legal agreement? Who are you talking to me? Yes. Uh, I didn't even read the legal agreement. What is it? Uh, well, we need to get, I, I, I would be reluctant to try to summarize it for you. Uh, basically, Was that what we it, talked about at the last meeting? Yes, Brianne, do you wanna maybe try to highlight it? It was brought up at the last meeting, um, I do believe. Is it like if I sell a property or if it gets damaged? I think you guys talked about at the last meeting. Yeah, it needs you need to read that agreement before before you agree to it. But it was summarized by my predecessor that this would be something that the um, the village would insist on if the BZA grants the variance because the shed is still located over the village's water line and if the village utility superintendent says that 
it needs to come out for any sort of repair or relocation, then the applicant has to agree to that. And it it is an agreement that will run with the property permanently. So you are going to need to, to take a look at that because, uh, uh, I mean, one of our one of our criteria criteria for granting a variance is that it doesn't interfere with village utilities. And, and, she, and if it does, it's a deal breaker as a general matter. So here we have something that's a fait accompli. It's already been done. And so the village is basically saying to you, well, here are some conditions that you got to agree because we got to be in a position to solve this problem if it becomes a problem. Um, so you really need to look at that. This is a significant document. Uh, and Mr. Schultz, you're going to have to take a look at it and make sure you're comfortable signing it. Okay. When uh, I, I wasn't even given it, not that I know of. You guys sent it out, Denise. Um, it no, I did. I didn't. I just put it online. It's in the packet that we have online. Can I can I suggest that? And I BZA folks, I know that you know this, but you you do have the latitude to go ahead and grant the variance with those stipulations, which would then give Mr. Schultz time to read that agreement. If he does not agree, he does not sign, that we don't, the, obviously the variance doesn't go forward, but, but that lets you do your business and then this is in his hands. Understood. Signing or not. Um, so, um, so we could proceed down those down that road. Now, Denise, you you include in, in your recommendation uh, complete the remediation. What did you have in mind? Well, that was confusing at the time that um, uh, Raven talked to Mr. Felder. It wasn't clear to me if um, everything had already been done, and it, it sounds as though what Mr. Schultz is saying is he did something additional, perhaps since that since that time. I don't know, Raven, you actually talked to Mr. Felder. Did Mr. Schultz actually do some additional things after Mr. your conversation with Mr. Felder? You're muted. Mr. Felder had stated that it was a work in progress and that he had spoken with Mr. Schultz. And um, he had stated to me that Ruben has put a lot of money and time into resolving the issue but he still, he, he wouldn't really say outright if it was still a problem. He referred to it as a work in progress. Uh, so he said that he was working with Mr. Schultz uh, on other solutions that may resolve the problem without costing any additional time and resources. I don't know where they left off on that. Um, that was my conversation last week with him. So Mr. Schultz, do you, are you still working on something or are you, in your mind you're done? Well, on my end of it, you know, the stuff that I sent to the uh, village, I did all that. What me and Mr. Felder talked about additionally is if maybe if he got some stone, you know, like rock stone, or whatever to put down, that would help. Um, but I haven't heard back from him since I talked to him. Um, but like I said, I did, what I submitted to the village, I did all that already, all that work. Okay. I all have, right. Yeah, I, have ahead, one, I have one question and I, I, it's going back and so I'm, I'm like you all, so I wasn't part of this, this meeting that was, that was in July. Um, the question I have and just going, and it's going forward, I don't wanna belabor the point. If this shed was built over our water, our water easement over our water lines, why were we even, I mean, is it one of these things that we're doing, you know, ask, forgive, ask forgiveness, not permission? Is that what we kind of took, took with what we're going forward with, that he's over a water line, and that's going to present a problem if, should a problem uh, occur in the future? So, so uh, let me answer that, because um, <clears throat> Staff recommended denying the, the, the variance, um, but the public works director was okay with it under the condition that if we have to get in there for an emergency and we have to destroy that shed or right. 
we're not going to pay to fix it. And at that point, they're going to have to relocate it. That's what this legal agreement is. And so the, you know, BZA chose to let him move forward with, with trying to, uh, you know, spend money and fix the problem and, and then come back just to see how, okay. how that went. Um, I mean, my, it would have been my choice to, to not have him spend the money um, and then get denied again. Um, but, you know, BZA was willing to give him an opportunity to do this. And if what I am understanding from what Raven has said is Mr. Felder seems to not want to go any, f he wants to work this out with his neighbor. Um, I don't think Mr. Felder is um, interested in, in seeing Mr. Schultz um, be denied it at this point. Okay. Well, then the conditional use of- As long as he agrees to. The, yeah, the condition that we have is that he's got to sign Exhibit B that we have here for the encroachment. He's got to sign that as a condition. Yes, I mean, and, and when I and at the time I did this report, I wasn't really sure where they were at on the on the stormwater uh, mitigation that they were still working on some things or not. So, yeah, I would uh, what uh, how I would propose we deal with that piece of it is just, just that we we look for a sign off by Mr. Felder that um, he's not looking for any further remediation activities. Uh, from what I'm hearing, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but because that's still up in the air and we're kind of guessing, I'd rather not be guessing given the posture of this matter. Staff can do that. Um, uh, we can approach Mr. Felder for that. So, so um, I guess moving forward, could the BZA uh, approve it under the conditions that that Mr. Um, Schultz is signs the agreement that Mr. Felder signs that he doesn't have uh, doesn't want to see Ms., uh, Mr. Schultz have any more um, moving many, any more dealings with the BZA, and that he gets the zoning permit and 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 has this document pays the fee to have this document recorded. Well, I would be happy to entertain a motion to that effect. Yeah, with those conditions, I will definitely uh, I move for those four things that Mr. Felder signs off, Mr. Schultz signs off on the agreement, uh, you meet the zoning requirements and you pay the fee. Gets the zoning permit and pays the, and pays the recording fee, yeah. Richard, I think I heard you say you'd second it. I did. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Judy, would you like to take the uh, the elaborate roll call vote? Well, you do have to go through the Duncan standards. Do we have to go through Duncan's again? Well, you never went, they didn't go oh. through the Duncan standards the first time because okay. Okay. they just left it kind of okay. hanging. Now, Brianne, if you can refresh my memory, the last meeting, uh, there was a method devised, perhaps Ellis, you remember, uh, of moving through these pretty efficiently. Um, and I'm blanking on what that was, but it moved everything a little bit quicker. Boy, uh, I, I think, I think uh, the question was whether some factors were not applicable. I, and it also may be that you preceded it by saying, are there any of the Duncan factors that you feel we need to discuss before we move through them? And you sort of front-ended that, and then we moved through the standards with just with a roll call on each one, um, unless they'd been flagged for discussion. Fair enough. Um, then I will ask, uh, looking at the Duncan standards, which you can find, um, on, you can find it in many places, but uh, you can find it in one of Denise's page fine two. reports here. Pardon me? Oh, uh, I was actually looking at it on page two of the minutes from the last ones when you voted, um, but I'm sure I have them in this document as well. Yeah, it's also on page two of Denise's staff report. Oh, staff report, yeah. yeah. So um, any uh, anybody want to comment on any of those standards before we just name them. We will name them uh, by number and you will get a chance to vote. Any comment on any of them? Applicability, non-applicability? Okay, then Judy, do you want to do it? 
you just can say yeah, number Brian, one and Brian, sure Brian. do you want to do we need to read the uh actual standard or can we go by number you can go by number all right to the first standard i will now call the roll and this is whether there will be beneficial use without the variance so yes is to proceed with the variance and no is to not proceed with the variance on on the first question salmonson Must be muted. Yes. Yes. Okay. That too. Thank you, Pallada. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Zoff. No. No. Jacobs. Yes. All right, to the second question whether the variance is substantial. Pallada. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Zoff. Okay, I'm having trouble. The, the variance to my mind is not substantial, but you're telling me I'm supposed to say yes if I want the variance to be granted? No, 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 no. That was only for the first one. The oh, okay. The question is whether the variance is substantial. Yes, okay. yes, it is or no. The variance is not substantial. Thank you. Um, Salmonson. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. The third question regarding the essential character of the neighborhood um, and whether this would, would propose a detriment. Salmonson. Um, yes. Pallada. No. Osterholm. No. Zoff. No. Jacobs. No. Nope. To the fourth question, um, whether this will adversely affect any governmental services. Austin. And the assumption here is with the yes. with the agreement in place, because we're only approving a condition upon the agreement being in place. Exactly. Correct. Osterholm. No. All right. Zoff. No. Polata. No. Salmonson. No. Jacobs. Nope. All right, to the fifth question, um, whether the property was purchased with knowledge of the zoning restrictions, Pallada. No. Osterholm. No. Salmonson. No. Zoff. No. Jacobs. Yes. All right, and the sixth question, uh, whether this could be, a uh, problem could be resolved through some other method, some method other than a variance, um, Zoff. No. Osterholm. Yes. Pallada. No. Salmonson. Yes. Jacobs. No. The seventh question. Uh, were the conditions self-created? Zoff. Yes. Pallada. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. All right, and finally, would the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement be done if you granted this variance? Osterholm. Can't tell if you're thinking or muted. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Uh, yes. All right, Pallada. Yes. Zoff. Yeah. Salmonson. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. All right. So now do you want to back around We've gone through those standards and call the vote on the motion. Okay, and so the motion is to approve the requested variance uh, conditioned upon satisfying the uh, or, or satisfying the conditions um, of 
Oh, and I'm looking at the wrong. You know well, I'm looking at. and Ellis, if you want, if you would like it, so what I have, I have those conditions as um, Mr. Felder signs that he has no argument with the variance. I, I simplified it to that extent because I felt like otherwise we might get into the weeds. Are you agree? That's fine. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, that Mr. Schultz signs the legal agreement provided by the Village of Yellow Springs, that the zoning permit is applied for and granted, and that the recording fee is paid. Right. Okay. Right. So, uh, so we're voting to grant this variance based upon uh, satisfaction of those conditions. Correct. And we have a motion and a second, so I'll go ahead and call the roll. Um, Osterholm. Yes. Uh, is off. Yeah. Pallotta. Yes. Donaldson. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And so staff, Mr. Schultz, we will um, get in touch with you and send you that um, legal agreement. All right. Sounds good. And, and the zoning permit. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good thing, Mr. Schultz. Someday Thank this you. will all be over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your time and sorry for all the mess <laughs> that's caused. Oh, no problem. No problem. So have a good night. Thank you. You too. I'm ready. Are we ready to call the next one? Yes. Mm. All right. And so we're going to be, um, this, the next one is a variance seeking relief uh, related to a uh, offense on Talis Drive. And is Mr. Gray with us? Uh, yep. Excellent. Good. Uh, Denise, you want to go ahead and uh, tell us about this? Yes. Uh, uh, so Mr. Gray ha has um, requested a uh, variance to allow um, his uh, uh, six foot height, so a two foot variance uh, of his fence um, along his uh, property line. He, he lives on Talos Drive and he's on the corner. It's an oddly shaped um, lot. And it's an, it's an unusual thing, but you know, we have to follow the zoning code. Now, there's an example of there, um, of that's good right there. Um, <clears throat> if you, it's kind of strange because if the person um, that lives um, to where, the, where you see the house, whoops, right, where you see the house above that, that is actually um, considered their side yard. And, and to the left, which you can't see in this drawing, is, um, is a property owner's backyard. And so the, what happens is, is if either of those other property owners would, would be applying for this fence permit, it would be okay for them to extend that six foot um, fence because that would be their back or side yard. But it's because Mr. Jordan is applying for it. Um, Mr. Gray, I'm sorry. Um, he he has to follow the requirements, which is once you hit um, the front yard, you are at four feet. That's a great. That's much better. He just wants to extend it a little bit further so that he isn't seeing the back deck of the side yard or the the backyard of the other property. So that is his request. Gotcha. Um, do we have any questions for Denise? I'm not hearing any. Mr. Gray, uh, anything you want to add? Um, if you just pop that back up real quick, if that's okay. Um, I'll just say one sentence and it's already been said. So at this point, I can only ruin this conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, well, have a shot. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to see it. Go ahead, do it. I want to see if I can screw this up. So yeah, so it's it's kind of just looking for the six foot variance right there. Um, I guess I don't know if the side yard is like a little bit there maybe. So it's yeah, our house is just sideways smashed into the side and back of the other. So that's that's all we wanted to uh, address. And it's 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 far enough off the road where you know we but anyway anyway I just that's that's what our request is. So. Yep. Got you. Any questions for uh, for Mr. Gray? Alrighty. Uh, do Jordan? Do any of the uh, neighbors object? 
Uh, the neighbor adjacent to me on that side uh, passed away recently. Mm. And I just thought rather than do this after someone moves in, I'd rather just kind of do the thing that we've been thinking about for five years and um, make it happen before someone you know arrives. Um, so, so those folks would be the ones that would be most related to this. But um, I, I, um, I actually have talked to the, the person who's uh, the family um, and I just let them know that what was happening and that you know the there might be a discussion or information coming to them from the village, but uh, the, he, he just said thumbs up. He didn't really say anything at that point. Good. Okay. Any uh, other questions? Yeah. yeah, staff had one inquiry um, from a property owner um, that owns is part owner of the farm ab abutting the back of his property. Um, but that was more about uh, his his sign, his wildlife habitat sign. And they were just wanting to make sure this wasn't going to be an enclosure for animals. Oh, that's, that's an interesting interpretation. Yeah, I said, yeah. I, said, I, said, I said it's probably for bee pollinating and that kind of thing, but I was guessing too, so. <laughs> I don't know, I think Yellow Springs has room for a Tiger King. <laughs> So, I wasn't going to say that, <laughs> but Raven, uh, Raven, do you have anything else to share with that? Because that was, you kind of thought that too, that was where it was going. <laughs> yeah, um, I believe maybe uh, Mr. Pence uh, has joined us. Um, Mr. Pence, if you wanted to uh, have any questions, I suppose, uh, I don't know, Alice, if you're going to be opening up a public hearing. Sure, we'll do that. Yeah. Hearing. Uh, I see that there was somebody that joined under iPhone and they had uh, spoken during a discussion earlier, uh, I, uh, intentionally, I believe. Um, so he's muted right now. Uh, I think it would be good, though, to hear from uh, Mr. Gray as to yeah. what the wildlife sure. sign really truly means, because yeah. I, had, I, had, I saw that and I didn't even think about that, but assumed it was for, you know, yeah, the, the Wildlife Federation or is it? Uh, um, I can't. I can't even remember the exact wording of that. But um, that's actually something that the village of Yellow Springs just went through to get certified. There's only two cities. Well, we're one village. Two, I think, villages or cities in all of Ohio that have been habitat certified. And all that means is it's not like a super well curated property where there's no room for a birds or for normal kind of critters and so forth that are in the wild. And so pollinators, uh, there's like, you need to have water supply for birds. Uh, you need to have like some, some twigs and things that are kind of rough and so they can have shelter and things like that. So it's, um, I think there's maybe been, someone would have to look it up, but somewhere in the process, there's maybe been dozens and dozens and dozens of, of, of properties around the village, including some larger institution type properties that have been certified officially and it's a real simple checklist that you go through to make sure you're not like um, damaging or detrimental um, to wildlife more than anything um, so so yeah ours, ours is just a friendly habitat it's not um, um, you know a discouraging normal um, normal level of wildlife not um, some sort of sanctuary per se okay Thank you for that. That's a good question, though. It's, it's uh, yeah, interesting. It, it was that had that, the right that hadn't crossed my mind, but and if anyone uh, is interested for more information, YS News did an article earlier this year regarding this very thing, uh, June 26, 2020, by Audrey Hackett. If anybody wants to check that out, there's yeah. more useful information in there. All righty. So uh, I think at this point we should ask Raven, or should I say Captain Kirk, to uh, open the public part of the hearing. Do we have members of the public that want to uh, participate, make a statement? If they do, they're muted right now. So... There's nothing in the chat. Okay. No hands raised. Okay. Okay. Um, I can Are make you? a PS comment. 
Is that okay for someone? I have one question. Uh, I think it's more for Denise. If if Tiger King Jordan Gray is looking at this, <laughs> I kid, I joke. But on either side, if it was if if either side that the neighbors wanted to build the fence, it could be a six foot. So he's just going forward with this, so it's got to be four foot because he's got to fit the var within yeah, the variance, right? Not, not either side, but um, the the side to the west. Um, but on the side to the, I guess it's the east, kind of east. Um, it it. The, it, he isn't extending beyond his house. So okay. the front yard, what, what determines the front yard is the, the corners of the house. Okay. So the house is just kind of facing that way. It's kind of- Right. But okay. you're correct in that if it was the neighbors on the west and north wanted to do the same exact thing, they could have a six foot fence. Okay, that's my one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, let's gavel the uh, public hearing to a close. Um, and I can make uh, one small motion. statement. I can just make one small statement. Is that okay? Um, I did chat with the farmer like years ago because there was some sort of a damage to the fence. And the only things that they, I think, were very concerned with was um, uh, you know, the cattle. When they put the cattle or, or the donkey out there, that they would be blocked in properly. So they have um, fortified that fence with some more wire gauge in the past. And um, it's rather, it's piecemeal kind of along the back, but we would make sure that the structure is, is sound and very high quality for, for retention purposes. And we wouldn't be adverse if they looked at it and said, we still wanna put a wire thing across it. Um, we could probably still collaborate with that as well. But I'm just mentioning that in case a question comes later um, or they wanted to say something and they missed the window or something like that. Um, I, I wouldn't be adverse to having that somewhere in there, but kind of at the fence line, um, so. All right, thank you, Jordan. Um, do we have a motion? Move that we grant the variance as requested. Okay, second. I will second. All right, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, um, is um, somebody going to walk standards. us through these standards yes. once again? I will indeed. And just to preface that, does anyone have any of the Duncan standards on which they'd like to, that they'd like to discuss further? I would just say the utilities one's probably not applicable. I'm, what's, right. I'm sorry, I missed that. The utilities one can probably be considered not applicable. Okay, so I cannot call them uh, not roll. Skip that one. Okay. All right. So we are proceeding with Duncan standards. The first question is whether the property will yield reasonable return without this variance. Osterholm. Yeah, Neil Springs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Salmonson. Yes. Zoff. Yes. Colada. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Okay, to the second variance, whether this is a substantial variance. Pilata. No. Osterholm. No. Salmonson. No. Zoff. No. Jacobs. Nope. All right, the third question, whether it's gonna change the character of the neighborhood, Zoff. No. Osterholm. No. Salmonson. No. Colada. No. Jacobs. Nope. Uh, is the fourth question the one we're yes. skipping? Yes. Thank you. We're skipping question four. And the fifth one is, um, did the property owner purchase with knowledge of this restriction? Colada. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Zoff. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. All right, question six. Could this problem be fixed in another manner? Pilata. Uh, no. Osterholm. No. Zoff. No. Salmonson. No. Jacobs. No. The seventh question. Were these conditions self-created? Zoff. 
No. Salmonson. Salmonson. There. Is he frozen? Maybe. Uh, Salmonson, we didn't hear you on the question number yeah. seven. With it. So the conditions were self-created, yes? Okay, Osterholm? No. Pallotta? Yes. Jacobs? No. Uh, the eighth question is whether the spirit behind the zoning code will uh, be done if you grant this variance. Osterholm? Yes. Zoff? Yes. Pallotta? Yes. Salmonson? Um, we lost him temporarily. He's coming back in. Okay. Uh, my answer was yes. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Jacobs? Yes. Very good. That concludes the Duncan Standards. So I'm going to go roll you back and take roll call if you're ready for it on the motion. Yep. Okay. Let's do that. All right. Zah? Yes. Salmonson? Yes. Pallotta? Yes. Osterholm? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Did I forget anybody? Seems like you did. Yeah. Seems like yeah. I did. Thomason? No. Scott, you forgot yeah. Scott, didn't you? No, I'm Osterholm. <laughs> oh my oh, God. God. You, you counted five people. <laughs> it's cosmic. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I've got a five to O. Oh. But I just felt that if someone was missing there. So you've you've passed the variance request. Jordan, you squeaked by this time. <laughs> Lucky. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Certainly. Thank yeah. you. Very much. All righty. Which brings us to the favorite item on the agenda is something called agenda planning. I never quite know what that means, but I think Judy does. What do we got to plan, Judy? That is a Denise question. She's oh, the, the woman in the know. Sure. No, I don't think we have any. Um, uh, no, no, not right now. I keep saying that. They just hey. we had more this year than we've ever had in the last yeah. four or five years. Isn't um, the brewery thing coming? Two meetings a year, Tom. I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't the brewery thing coming or no? Oh, the brewery thing. We yeah, don't know. We don't yeah. have yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Brianne, what was that? I think he's talking about 1475 Zenith. Yes, he is. Yeah. 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 yeah that was staked ah. out and um and the patio was actually gonna be actually crossing over the property line. So they're rethinking that um and looking at you know possibly making it smaller. It wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't eight eight feet. It wasn't four feet from the property with line. It was actually it's a weird angle. And once and once it was actually um, uh, staked out, you could kind of just see how the angle went. And so part of it was like a foot or a foot and a half inside the property line, and on the other side of the building, it was like a foot over the property line. So they're going to rethink that. Yeah, you got to keep it on your property. Yeah. <laughs> right. We can't grant a variance on that, can we? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they may be back. Uh, it would be January. <laughs> but they're gonna if they're gonna do an outdoor patio as as what they've described. They have to come back for, for a variance. Um, if they choose just to put a fence up on their property line and level out their grassy area, then they, they've already gotten the approval for the outdoor patio and, and wouldn't need to come for a variance. All right. Well, we'll be here should they need us. Uh, anything else for the good of the cause? I just I like to ask one. is is anyone's term up at the end of the year? Or are we all set to go with with uh, for another full four population years. of the BZA in 2021? Well, nobody nobody expires at the same time. Uh, it's completely staggered. So I'll check it again, but I don't think we have anyone in it. Good. I, do I think we said Alice was gonna thing. be the chair. 
No, I'm looking forward to uh, watching our next chair do a fabulous job. It'll be great. <laughs> Alice, you did such a great job tonight. It's such a skill building thing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You want to do this. I mean, you don't so think you jump right in there. <laughs> First, I think whoever's chair should have Raven's background. <laughs> right? Exactly. You know, the bridge. Engage. Ominous, yeah. Yeah. Is Ra Raven, are you willing to give that up? <laughs> rent it. <laughs> If we could all do that, we could have two hours number one. <laughs> all the spatial anomalies we have to deal with all the time. <laughs> all right. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I've got one thing before you do. Yes. Go ahead. Um, Judy already knows this, but uh, the House Bill 404 that uh, is currently in concurrence committee will permit the extension of digital meetings through July 1st of 2021, but Council adopted an emergency ordinance um, Monday to permit the village and its municipal bodies, which the BZA is one of, to continue to meet anytime there's a declared pandemic or public health emergency that restricts in-person gathering. So you will have that capability going forward, even if the legislature lets that expire in 2021. Okay, that's good news. And it sounds like we're ready for the next pandemic, too. <laughs> oh, boy. You gotta be ready. <laughs> get All toilet right. paper. <laughs> Let's get a motion to adjourn here. I so move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank it's a pleasure. you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice to see you, folks.